title came from a priestly order. And it started with, um, I mean, it goes from um, Noah moving all the way forward. Um, matter of fact, it even goes before Noah. Um, and what you have is, through that order, it goes all the way down and went all the way up to Hamashiach. Now, we know that there can be only what, um, when it comes to Israel. Has there ever been a time Israel was allowed to have two high priests? No. Men are serving in, in, in the same dispensation at the same time? No. When Hamashiach um, was immersed, who was the high priest at that time? Thank you. It was Caiaphas at that time. But, y'all ever notice that Caiaphas didn't um, emerge on the ship or not ran? But who did? No. It was John. John's father was what? Of the golden calf, that would never have been a Levitical priesthood. 
The Levitical priesthood was temporary. There was never supposed to be a Levitical order, a Levitical priesthood, because what? Yahuwah, he said he had chosen to use what? Under the Melchizedek order, who was going to be operating? You mean he was going to use the firstborn son of all of Israel? Not just Aaron's son, the Levites. He was going to use the firstborn sons of all the tribes. Y'all skipped over that part of the Sunday school. <laughs> <laughs> Because the first time I read um, everything that opens the matrix is hidden, is at, that's in Exodus, right? Or is that in Genesis? Mm -hmm. Exodus. Oh. Yeah, because remember um, before um, the sin of the golden calf, he wasn't going to, um, there was no such thing of a Levitical priesthood. And there wasn't going to be, because he had already told Israel. He was the first or the, the firstborn of all the sons of Israel was his, his portion. They were going to be doing the service as well. <clears throat> so let me jump back on to where'd you stop? Um, um we'll get on Exodus 19 and 6, and you wanted me to do verse 8. Yeah, verse 8. Uh -huh. Exodus 19, verse 8. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahweh has spoken, we will do. And Moshe returned the words of the people unto Yahweh. So, what has just happened here? The people accepted the proposal. Now, who, 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 are, who are the people? Yashra. Very important. Let's go to Tehillim of Psalms 89 and 28. So, so far from the first lesson, this lesson, we see see how everything pertains to Israel. Israel is a special people. They belong to Yahuwah. Yahuwah is the Elohim of Israel and none else. Um, we see in all these things. scriptures talk because see people always want to say that we're saying something. No, we're not saying anything. The scripture has already stated it. We're just reciting what is written. Verse 28. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. Stop right there. That's very important. So when Yahuwah entered into covenant with the nation of Yashra, how many days did it take for him to break the covenant? Or how many years? Huh? They immediately broke it. <laughs> so, when they broke this covenant, how did they break this covenant? They committed adultery on the night of their honeymoon. They committed adultery on the night of their honeymoon. Now,
mean, what, what happened, I mean, as far as the people? What, what was instituted? First of all, what was the um, action that they took, that they uh, committed that broke the actual covenant? Yeah, not only worship, but did they not build it? They built a golden calf and began to worship. And they even they gave it a name. <laughs> Anybody know what they named it? They named it after y'all. They named it after you. <laughs> That's bold, isn't it? <laughs>
But what did the Most High say to Abraham during that time? No, for sure, you guys should see that the stranger in the land is not there. Mm -hmm. Is it no for sure that your, your seed shall be a stranger and the land is not theirs? And that nation shall what? Evil and treat them 400 years. Yeah, inflict them 400 years. So, Abraham um, was asleep during this time, so Yahuwah himself did what? So you who himself, he walked between the pieces. Because one thing about man, just like Israel broke that covenant. What covenant? <coughs> Israel broke that, broke that covenant. So now the covenant stands on what? The word of Yahuwah alone. And what's one thing Yahuwah cannot do? Or will, I should say will not do? He won't go back on his word. He will not lie. He will not go back on the word. So now when we read the Psalms, I tell Talim, I had a reason for going there. Israel broke the covenant. But the covenant was not based upon Israel keeping it. It was based upon Yahuwah's word. So now this covenant has become what? A perpetual covenant. Israel will always what? exist. Israel will always what? Be his people. So, what we see here in Tehillim, we're going to read it says, My mercy will I keep for him for what? Evermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. Go ahead, I'll go. You read. Oh, my bad. Hey, go 29 down to 37. Psalms 89, verse 29. His seed also will I make to endure forever. He, no, he going to make it to endure for a little while. His seed also will I make to endure forever. And his throne as the gaze of heaven. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgment, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Now read that one more time. Nevertheless, verse 33, nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Now pay attention to uh verse 34. Psalms 89 verse 34. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. He said my covenant will I not break. He said no what? Alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. <clears throat> so Israel is going to always be his what? His people are always going to be in covenant, always going to be his chosen, always going to be what? Above all nations. That, let me tell you, from the original plan, that's what he's restoring Israel for, to take them back to the original plan. To rule above the nation, to teach them the righteousness of your world. Go ahead, talk again. Verse 35. Once have I sworn by my set of partners, that I will not lie unto Dao. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, and as a faithful witness in heaven. <laughs> okay, verse 35, what's going on right there? Once I have sworn by my set of partners that I will not lie unto Dao. Well, David, for you Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on there? Well, you look like you've been answered. He's just establishing a covenant. You, or, or even David reciting the covenant made unto him. Yep. There was a covenant made 
made unto who? Daoud or David. And what was that covenant? What was the promise? The seed shall endure forever. Okay, the seed shall endure forever and what? Say it again, Uncle T. The scepter shall not depart from him. Okay, yeah, it's the scepter shall not depart from him. But remember, he told David what? His throne shall never go in need or want or need for a king. There will be always what? A king on the throne. Just like you said, the scepter should not depart from him. So what we see going on there, all of this was to show that even though the covenant was broken with the chosen people, the covenant wasn't based upon Israel keeping it. It was based upon Yahuwah's word, and he can't go back on his word. So Israel will always be, there will always be his people, and nobody will be equal to Israel. The question was asked last week, and it will ask, can other nations be grafted in? Because we're teaching on the wild olive branch. And we read through scriptures to show where, or the, uh, the two olive branches. And we read in the scripture where the two olive branches were Israel and Judah, or the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And the question was asked, can Gentile nations or somebody outside of Israel, can they be grafted into that branch? And my answer was no. And to this day, it's no. <laughs> the reason being, Israel have laws when it comes to that type of thing. Even in natural horticulture or whatever. You know, whenever you go back to Torah, I think uh, the term is Kalua. Israel has the laws of Kalua, I believe it is, where every seed has to be what? After its, After its kind. Every what? Every tree, every everything had to be after its own kind. Even when it came down to the fabrics and stuff that we were wearing, Israel, they were not even permitted to wear mixed fabrics. So it was explained that when you go look to that, at that word grafted, the word Sion or Zion means to be grafted. It's mean, it means grafted, but to be grafted. But we also understand that when it comes to dealing with the, a grafting process, whenever something is being grafted into another, it has to be a close relation to what? The parent or root stock. It has to have the same genetic makeup. You can't grab something foreign into a <coughs> natural. It won't survive. It'll die every time. And so this is why we show people that in the Hebrew Scriptures, no, you cannot find in the Hebrew Scriptures where it talks about a foreign people or nation being grafted in. That's unheard of. Genesis and Revelation, you don't find that. And it was asked so well, if that's the case, how do you explain to Gentiles or aliens or people not of the nation of Israel, how do you explain <coughs> that to them then? What would be their position? Well, in Yahuwah's kingdom, you know, every kingdom, you have what is called servants. That's not a bad thing. <clears throat> the role we fulfill today in the United States of America, America we're servants. We're in somebody else's kingdom, but we're servants. It's going to be the same thing with the nations. They're going to be servants. And even though the scripture says, you know, Treat the strangers that the ones that, you know, will follow the Torah and all as one born in the land. Yeah, you will be treated like one born in the land, but that does not make you the people. What it's saying is, give you citizenship in the land, because you, you all, you're going to agree to something. You're going to agree to follow the what? Laws, statutes, and judgments of that land. We are foreigners in this land. This is not our home as Israelites. 
But did not we receive citizenship? And what came along with that citizenship? Benefits. You receive certain benefits in this land when you are a citizen versus aliens or somebody who, who doesn't have what? Citizenship yet. You ever seen a person with a green card and all this stuff? You ever notice there are certain privileges and stuff that they don't have right or access to? Because they're not citizens. When they will receive full benefits, I mean a full citizenship, they receive the benefits of American citizens. And that's what the nation is going to have. They're going to be, uh, be given citizenship to live among only one particular stranger nation. That's when we went over there. Yep. Hebrews 16, 16, the one that will follow the law, statutes, and commandments of Yehudah. That particular stranger, not all strangers. And it's just like America. You know, you can't be a citizen of America until you do what? You have to first oblige and obligate and commit to what? And put to law, put it in, in right there, I will what? Follow the laws and what? Of this nation. <laughs> and that's the same thing the Gare will be doing, the one that will be able to live among Israel. They will get citizenship because they're going to what? Submit and follow after the ways of Yahuwah and the laws that he has established for the nation of Yashua Hall. That's what you get. How does, uh, that all the atrocities that Yahuwah's people have gone through in these kingdoms, being subdued by them, now all of a sudden, when he preaches about his kingdom, that I got quiet because I know it's going to pick up. <laughs> <laughs>